What are the main motivators for CSPs to embrace open source? And where does OpenStack fit in a multi-cloud and increasingly cloud-native world? Amy, perhaps you'd like to, to start. If you can be in an open environment where you are collaborating across companies, across organizations, it gives you more opportunity to use multiple CSPs, to use you know, more opportunities um, spread out geographically. The more interoperability there is, the better. It's really all about interoperability and integration. So that's something that traditionally the CSPs have have not really understood that that's, that's what we are. Um, and so, you know, open source is a way for us to really embrace that and, and really ex expand across the community, across our customers, across our, our vendors, and of course, across between, between us, mm -hmm. between the CSPs themselves. A lot of the feedback we get is the lock-in strategy that has historically been in play with a lot of the traditional manufacturers of technology that you know, carriers have, have utilized. So open source is offering, at least enforcing, more variety, more change. I think it's disconnecting the lock-in strategies. It does uh, take you to a different level. Who, how else could you have brought together compute and storage and networking with an open ecosystem tackling all the main uh, issues du jour from the CSP perspective and then from a realization perspective too. So there's definitely a case to be made for open source uh, today and ongoing. It drives innovation, number one. And, I mean, there's a lot of debate whether or not it's the best vehicle for creating innovation, but I think it's caused change. And that change has had a ripple effect on the industry and I think it's benefiting not only the providers of service, but the consumers of the service that the CSPs are offering. You know, the ecosystem, um, especially in the telecommunications and, and cloud area was very closed and very locked with, with big, large players for many, many years. And as you've gone to, as we've gone to an open environment, it's opened that ecosystem up and smaller players have an ability to come in and be you know, disruptors and change agents. So today I look at it uh, as it's brought to fore a whole bunch of technologies, some parts not so good, some parts very good. The ecosystem aspects, the integration aspects, wonderful. The things that have not quite panned out, it's very uh, hard to go build a world-class virtualization platform in an open source community. For example, VMware spends a billion dollars in software on getting the world's best hypervisor, network virtualization, storage virtualization. However, VMware loves the OpenStack on top of it because that brings together the entire ecosystem. So I think there's a balance between what is truly open, what is curated, what is prescriptive, versus what's thrown open to the community to go develop and bring to a fore in a given CSP. You're right, you know, OpenStack's not reinventing hypervisors anytime soon. Um, and, but it still has that kit of parts that, that you know, the entire open source community needs. It's complicated. I mean, it's one of the things that we found is, is that, you know, tier ones like yourselves have the luxury of having a lot of horsepower behind driving those initiatives. We work a lot with tier two and tier three operators which are struggling because their expectations were that it was a little closer to push button and it's not. And, and a lot of them have focused primarily on deploy and have forgotten about the fact that the real important stuff happens in the second day and from that point forward, and how do you actually deal with those consequences of that decision? You have to have a robust ecosystem of, of contributors, of providers, of vendors. All of that is important in the whole framework of what we're doing. How do we standardize somewhat on some infrastructure standards so that we can help drive those applications that are coming on top of it to, to be more easily associated? Well, and I think that the work by ONAP and uh, the OPNFE and the, mm -hmm. and, the, and the Linux Networking Foundation is really moving in that direction. Absolutely. And, and, you know, and all the tier, tier, top tier um, providers are participating as well as middle and, mm -hmm. and down, downstream tier providers. So, so that, that orchestration automation infrastructure ties into, you know, the real gap, which is the operations side, I've been harping on that for years, and, and, and you, you, both of us have lived the pain. Right. <laughs> from our standpoint, the very next bastion of innovation needs to come from 
taking the open stack, taking the ecosystem, and making it a great place to integrate in a very holistic fashion, the VNFs. Because that's what it's all about, the specialized workloads sitting on top of the NFEs, which in turn sit on top of the network. So there are really two contexts for OpenStack. One is inside the data center serving up compute and cloud and uh, uh, agile compute and storage versus the networking use cases where it's about VNFs sitting on top of the network. And increasingly, I think as a community, we need to spend more energy on optimizing OpenStack specifically for those environments. And as I mentioned earlier, the operations piece has been long the stepchild of OpenStack. Yes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the ability to actually see that vision come to reality is the, is the ability to orchestrate. I kind of use the analysis that we've got a lot of dancers out there, but we need someone that can actually make them all work in unison. Right? Because we're talking about some things that are incredibly complex, and we've got the capability with this technology to actually do things in terms of service delivery and services that we can deliver that haven't even been envisioned yet. That's where mm -hmm. the potential really lies and from our vantage point. I think right? one of the things that, that is always, when there is so much potential out there, it, it, it's a risk that you want to go do all the very complex things first. And I think we need to, to step back a minute and say, let's do some of the simple things first and get yeah. some of those simple capabilities That's there. Yay and to, then we can that. build on that. <laughs> yeah. Yay to that. Amen, amen. You right. know, I, I think uh, exactly right. NFV, VNF, simple things like automated life cycle of the VNFs day zero, day one. Well, but that as sounds point, simple, but it's, it's not. not. <laughs> <laughs> and why is that? Yeah. Well, and we, and we get into the situation where I, I kind of use the analogy, it's the, it's the technologist's uh, shiny ball syndrome. There's so many new things going uh -huh. out there, and we're seeing what happened, at least not, we're observing, right? So OpenStack, you know, the life, the half-life of, of open source technologies by itself is very, very short, and it's getting shorter, it seems. And today now, the big theme is, we're talking edge, we're talking containers. So all of a sudden, OpenStack, which used to be the dominant theme at these conferences, is now starting to weigh because of these other things are starting to come in place. And are you going to, we haven't even perfected the OpenStack infrastructure ecosystem yet, and we're already potentially moving into new stuff. Building that, dependable, predictable lifecycle management type capabilities within OpenStack, um, like Airship delivers, those types of lifecycle management tools, those are critical to being able to deliver for those VNFs, those critical network functions. And, and as we give them more reliability, more dependability, more predictability, they're going to be more willing to operate in a cloud-like fashion. This is kind of a dance with us in the operations side. You know, it's like, you know, they're all from the state of Missouri, the show me state. Yep. You know, yep, show me it are. works. OpenStack is there. Correct. Part of the reason why I think it's it's gotten away from that sort of focus on OpenStack is because it's a solved problem. We don't talk about Linux anymore, and there's what, billions of instances of right. Linux out there. Yeah, so maybe the dialogue should really be, it's not the shift from VMs to CNFs or VNFs to CNFs, it's VNFs and CNFs both running and coexisting in the context of an OpenStack platform. Yeah. And absorbing Good Kubernetes point. as, I think if we, change that dialogue, people think it's a statement of a replacement, it's an and, it's not a uh, or or a, you right, know, right. a but. Yeah, right. it, it's an evolution. And I think it's also, is, is there enough staying power in the industry as a whole to not abandon it when it starts mm -hmm. to get a little rough? Because it's been a little rough, and maybe less so for you guys, because you've been mm -hmm. doing it longer, and you've got a much bigger uh, I mean, environment. No, 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 but no, I can no, tell no, you that no. we get, we get, we get, a, <laughs> we we get a lot of, the rough. yeah, we and get a lot of. started earlier with right. the rough. Mm -hmm. we, get, we get a lot of pushback, and then it goes to this trough of disillusionment, you know, Gartner philosophy, which is, yeah. there's another term, I think it's in the, in the crypto space, which is like basically hanging on for dear life while the <laughs> thing okay. plunges, right? Nice. Are we got people right. hanging on for dear life to see it get through this, this period and the maturity level is there, and, and I agree well, with you, know, it's working. All of the companies, if you think about it, even the tier ones, you know, there's limited resources to devote to this. And and what, what the vendors and the community really needs is use cases and requirements. I mean, that's something that OpenStack has always struggled with because it started out of the developer community and it really, you know, now we, I think we have a pretty good ecosystem, but there's always need for more help. I think we've come to realize there are lots of forks in the road, many dead ends. We got to clean up the thing, 
come up with the next version, uh, uh, either deprecate or let go of the things that did not quite work. There's too many choices. I, I can't tell you how many customers I've talked to, some of the tier twos, tier threes, in other places that went down one of the wrong forks, not right. the lasting forks. You're sitting here on the right side of things that worked, albeit, like you said, with lots of bodies and people and investments. Folks in the road, I can tell you, people are stranded on older versions of OpenStack with no place to get from there because it's too old to you know, rock and roll, too young to die kind of a environment sitting have, out there. I've heard rumors that Mercado Libra is still at Cactus. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. So this is, a, this is a problem that we as an industry have got to bring everyone to the version that we all collectively think is now hit the next level of maturity, maybe create a major point and we encourage the entire ecosystem to move that to that point because if you don't do that, you have all these stranded resources out there right. with lots of failed projects, if you will, that need Right, that but need those middle upgraded. tier people can really, ha you know, they can reinforce what we're doing because, you know, they have the same problems. Oh, it's very, it, it's but, but, absolutely, it's just scale. It's, it's really what it's we're scale dealing and, with. But. And open source is here to stay. I mean, it, we're not going to go back to a world of proprietary, software proprietary building. That's not going to happen. And, and, you know, you know, we have been the leaders out there, you know, the larger companies have been the leaders out there. But, you know, the other companies are coming along. And it, like I said earlier, it's that whole ecosystem that, allows for expansion for integrators and things to come bring them along. 